was born in October of 1940 in Cheneyville, which is a small town in South Rapids. Um, attended grammar school here, high school, Bolton High School, then went on to LSU in Baton Rouge, and I um, was in engineering for three years, and my I somehow or another uh, got the idea that I really didn't want to be an engineer, so kind of drifted around for in school for about a year, and um, changed over to English and philosophy, which is uh, something that you can't make a living with. So at my, in my fourth year, toward the end of my fourth year, and I was not far from graduation, I looked around and saw that there was nothing I could do to support myself. So um, I applied to law school and was accepted at LSU Law School. So that's, I attended there from 63 to 66 and graduated um, in 1966. Father, C.H. Uh, Crawford H. Downs, uh, was a school teacher here in Rapids Parish and he was elected to the House of Representatives. Ran, he was a principal down at Cheneyville where I was born. He was elected to the House of Representatives and while he was there he became interested in law so he began he enrolled in uh, LSU Law School concurrently with his uh, tenure as a uh, state representative. And uh, he uh, became a floor leader for Earl Long, and then he was elected to the Senate after a couple of terms, and then uh, was defeated eventually uh, by another, in another Senate race. My mother was um, Alice Downs, Alice Degg Downs, uh, she had a master's degree in library science, and she was a librarian um, at North Bayou Rapids School here in Rapids Parish. Uh, she eventually went to work for Bill Dodd at the uh, State Department of Education. My senior year, I was about two or three months from graduation, and I really had a job offer or two, and I just, I didn't, I wasn't married and I just didn't know what I was going to do. I just uh, was thinking about it. And George Pugh called me in his office one day and said, uh, uh, do you have a job? And I said, well, I have some offers, but I, I'm really, I don't know what to do. And he said, let me tell you, I said, I, there's an opening. Uh, Judge Frugge with the Court of Appeal needs a law clerk and uh, I will recommend you and uh, send you over there if that's what you want. So. I uh, moved to Lake Charles and uh, clerked a year for the Court of Appeal. Uh, one of the most rewarding experiences that I have ever had, actually, in the, in the law business. And uh, uh, the court then had five judges. Um, chief judge was Albert Tate, who, of course, went on to the Supreme, Louisiana Supreme Court and then to the United States Fifth Circuit, and an absolutely brilliant scholar, legal scholar. And his counterpart on the, or antithesis on the court, Tom Hood was a arch conservative. He was from Lake Charles. And the opinions and dissents and all in those cases were uh, just, uh, they, were, they were miraculous to bow. It's Judge Frugge, for whom I clerked, he was about 75 or 80 years old at the time. And when I first got there, he called me in the office and said, look, um, I don't write opinions. That'll be your job. So what I will do when, we come, when the cases are, that I'm assigned to be the lead author on, uh, when I get back from oral argument, I'll take the docket and write either A for affirm or R for reverse. And it's up to you from there. And of course, it terrified me because, uh, I mean, here I am, fresh out of law school, knew very little except a lot of technical stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a sink or swim deal, but I was fortunate enough to, uh, uh, to have progressed satisfactorily, I guess, because they kept me for the full year. I, after I finished clerking for the Judge Frugge, I, I moved back to uh, Alexandria and I went into practice uh, with my 
father's former law partner, uh, Phil V. Grimion. And my father really didn't practice law. He was more into the political part of the thing and that sort of thing. So, but his name was on the roster. But Phil Grimion did, was an active practitioner. So I, I went in with him. And uh, we, uh, I did some insurance defense work. Uh, there was a uh, defended workers' compensation cases all throughout the state of Louisiana uh, for coal operators, casualty company, and some general practice, plaintiff's work, and that sort of thing. I then uh, joined the firm of Garrett and Ryland, which uh, consisted of Donald Garrett and B. Dexter Ryland and practiced with them for three or four years. And then I went out on my own as a solo practitioner. Dexter Ryland, my former partner, he was working for Charles Wagner, who was a district attorney. He was the first assistant district attorney for Mr. Wagner. And he called me one day and said, I'm running for district judge. So he ran and was successful. He was elected. And, uh, and he called me and said, well, I've been doing this work for the school board. Mr. Wagner's going to need somebody to do that. Why don't you go see him? And you've had, I was the city attorney for the town of Boyce at that time. That was one of the things I did. He said, you've got some, some uh, municipal and parish law experience, which is a kind of a niche practice and representing public bodies. And he said, he, he needs some help and you, you would be good for him. So I w went and interviewed with Charlie, Charlie Wagner. And he hired me as an assistant DA uh, and in 1991, I believe. And he, uh, I, I did nothing but the school board work. That's the only uh, work I had to do for Mr. Wagner as assistant. I was in the civil section. I didn't do any criminal work. And I uh, did that for five years and I, um, he had a first assistant district attorney then who then left the office and went to North Louisiana. And so Mr. Wagner called me up and said, uh, I want you to take the job of first assistant, which is a, uh, a much more serious job and involves supervising all of the criminal prosecution in the DA's office. But it was one of those decisions you make that, that uh, you know, you make those things, you think you're, you don't know whether you're doing the right thing or not. You really, uh, it's a, a decision. You make those as you go along in life and some of them turn out right and some of them don't. And so I, I took the job and I was there for five years. And then I, uh, Mr. Wagner unfortunately contracted a uh, cancer and, and passed away uh, in a fairly short time. And the statute provides, or the Constitution provides, that the first assistant then steps up to be the DA until a special election is held to fill the unexpired term. So I was sworn in as district attorney and did that for eight or ten months, something like that. And I, I put my name in the hat for election as DA. And somehow, and I still don't know how, uh, was not opposed for the position. And um, so I filled out Mr. Wagner's term. And then when the end of that term, which was a year or two, I, um, I again stood for re-election and twice more for two six-year terms. And I, I've been blessed by not having an opponent ever. During my tenure as DA, the the victims' rights law, uh, which was uh, an effort by the legislature to grant victims of crime some rights to be informed of criminal prosecutions and those kinds of things, because the emphasis in prosecution has always been upon the rights of the defendant and how they've got all these rights not to be questioned and. Uh, you know, they have a fair jury, and if anybody even indicates that they might want to convict somebody and you leave them on there, they appeal on the basis that uh, it's an unfair deal. And, and if the jury is not racially balanced, that's an unfair deal. And, you know, on and on and on. So uh, the, bit, the legislature did pass. Uh, actually, it was a constitutional amendment allowing uh, 
uh, the legislature to pass a victim rights law, which is found in Title 18, 18, um, 44 something. I can't remember the exact statute, but so the once that was passed, the DA's office could hire a victim's coordinator, and that person's job was to contact victims and their families and to keep them posted on the developments in criminal cases and when there would be hearings and what the outcomes were if they didn't want to attend and if they had questions how to how to uh, uh, interface with the prosecutor and it was sort of a pipeline between the victims and their families and the prosecution and police system which uh, made victims somewhat more comfortable in the process. Uh, it's never never a good thing for a victim to have to go through the trial process, but that did make it that victim's rights law and the implementation of it, which we did to as much as we could in Rapids Parish, um, that, uh, that was helpful to resolve that situation and make people who are victims of crime whose rights are just, in my opinion, just as important and sometimes more important than that of the defendant to make them feel like that they're a part of the process. Uh, my father was not a hunter and uh, because we were in a rural area out there, I developed this interest in hunting and I have hunted all of my life and it's one of the passions of life that I have and one of the, the joys that I have. Uh, my my maternal grandmother uh, actually owned Kent House for about 15 or 20 years. And when my father went off to law school, I and my mother uh, and my two sisters, we lived at Kent House. And Kent, Kent Plantation House is the oldest house in Rapids Parish, built in the 1700s. And it, uh, my grandmother eventually many years later, sold the property where the house was located to the American Legion. And they were going to build an American Legion thing and they were going to tear the house down. So my mother uh, and a number of other women uh, formed an agency or a group and they raised money and moved the house up by Rapides Road about maybe a half a mile, not, not very far and rebuilt it. And now it's a state commemorative area, state park. So I've always been interested in old houses and historical things like that and, and history. And I wanted to get out of town uh, because I like the out of doors and I like country living. So I, my wife and I found this house and it had been abandoned for five years and before that had not been well maintained but it the shell of it was had a lot of beauty and it uh a lot of potential so we invested more money than we had and will ever have probably um i was fortunate to have credit at the bank so we put a lot of money in it and rehabilitated it and it it uh it's been a a joy of my another one of my joys uh and uh it I've, I've done a lot of work myself personally, and but it's a, a wonderful life to live here in this setting. And uh, it's uh, the house was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. It's a, a 1850s house. I think blessed to uh, be a lawyer and have been a lawyer, and I'm still in the active practice. I go to work every day and. I do take off sometime on Friday about 2 o'clock, but other than that, I'm there from 8.30 to 4.30, and uh, I enjoy it, and it's fulfilling and rewarding, and uh, I think that it's a, a wonderful thing to do because, to help people with problems that they have and make their lives and, I think, the world better.